Yo, 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 guys, what is up? What is up? Dar is back, and we are looking at a new game today. Now, this game is a free to play RTS brought to us by EA. This game is called Battleforge. So, before we really break into it here, I kind of want to talk a little bit about you know one thing that really makes this game unique is uh, you know when we compare it to other RTS games that have been around for a while you know like uh, Starcraft, Warcraft uh, oh my god there's just so many of them with the Age of Empires uh, Command and Conquer I mean you can just go on for hours <laughs> so anyway uh, yeah this one is completely different where um, and it's what I the, the difference is what I really like about it is um you know, it's similar in the fact that it's a real-time strategy game. Um, you know, you make your units and you try to conquer each other or, you know, go after your objectives. Well, in this one, you know, like World of Warcraft, you build a barracks. Or, yeah, or not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft 1, 2, and 3, you build a barracks, you build footmen. Um, you know, if you're playing against another human, they make footmen. You know, it's the same thing. Well, this one here, you don't make buildings... Uh, like that. In this game here, you summon your units to the field for my deck of cards. And as you can see here, I have a deck of cards down here at the bottom. This is my current current selected deck. And like I said, this is a free-to-play game. And you start, you actually start out with, I think they give you three or four decks. And then from those decks, you can play them as they are. You can mix and match the cards to build your own deck and whatever you want to do. So, like here, I have a Wind Weaver card. This is, you know, uh, ranged, basically, uh, archers. Wind Put it out on the field. There you go. I have Wind Weavers now. And it is different as far as, uh, you know, like you gather resources like gold and wood and Warcraft uh, with Vespin gas and some type of crystal thing for uh, Star Starcraft. Oh my god, I ain't played it so long, I don't remember what the hell the thing's called. But anyway, yeah, so, uh, you know, and this, you don't gather resources, you don't build a base like that. Balance. And we're gonna get to that, and we're gonna get into that in just a few minutes here. Um, but yeah, so you play cards, and what I like about that, I mean, there has been a lot of card-based uh, RTS games and similar in the past that have all kind of flopped. And, that, and the reason they flopped is because, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, yeah. They sucked. They were extremely shitty-ass piece-of-shit games. I mean, it's garbage. And the way they did this is just incredible. Yeah, it's card-based, but, you know, I use my cards to summon. You know, I can use my card to summon a building. Um, I can use my card to summon a spell. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of things you can do. And it's all based around cards. And what's awesome about that is they made it work. And also, if you're playing against some, say you're doing a PvP match, and you're playing against somebody else, it is extremely unlikely that you're both going to have the same units, or the same makeup of units, the same combination of units. And it really, it really brings a lot of, uh, you know, customization and um, uniqueness to every player, because everybody uses different decks. I seriously doubt there's anybody else on this game with the exact deck makeup of this particular deck that I'm using. You know, there may be one or two, but I very seriously doubt that, you know, people have chosen these particular cards all the way through to make that deck. Like I have. Okay, so there's that. And that's one thing I really like about the game is, you know, there's just, there's so many cards so many different monsters and units and men and buildings and everything in this game that it's very rare to ever see two people using the same setup. Alright. So, with that said, how do I, I you know, like we said, we talked about you get, you know, a free, you get, like what, I don't remember, it's like three or four free decks when you, when you start the game. Now, I have been playing this game a little myself, off and on over three or four years, I think. And it's a really cool game. It really is, you know. And you can look at the graphics. are pretty neat. I mean, you get, you know, units like this, you know, where it's a single unit. This yeah. is considered a medium unit. You know, here's a, this is an idea of a small unit. 
wind, wind. Yeah, and of course we've already went through. You know, we have buildings. Um, let's see, this one would be considered a large unit. I mean, you can see the difference. You know, like you know, if this is like human size, you know, she's like shack, and this would be you know right around I don't know, 10, 20 feet tall. And then you have extra large units. The big white one. You know, and you have all kinds of things. I mean, that's not a human. That's not a human. This is humanist, human-like. This is human-like. I probably like that one's probably elves or something. I don't know. But I mean, it's just really cool, you know. And then you have, you know, you even have things like dragons and shit in the game. You know, it's just, it's really neat, all the different combinations of different kinds of things. And you have your different elements, you know, you have nature, dark, uh, nature, the dark is considered shadow, which would be like, uh, undead, um, nature is, you know, like we've already seen here. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Frost, and then you have fire. Those are your four elements in the game. And then you have neutral, like, uh, you know, Grogan Kale here, he's a neutral. The Sky Lords are with us. He, you know, he has no, uh, Not bad for a cobbler. no uh, alignment to any, do anything. So anyway, um, let's get right in here. Okay, so I figure, okay, oh yeah, what I want to touch on cards. Okay, so you start out with three or four decks for free, and then you can get additional cards by buying them, and you buy cards using Battle Forge points. Now, Battle Forge points are premium currency. Um. It's like gold and world of tanks. Uh, you get what I'm trying to say. You know, cryptic points for Star for Star Trek Online, which isn't even cryptic anymore. I forgot what they call it now. Zen or something stupid. But anyway, so yeah, they're Battle Forge points. Now you can get them by paying real money and getting Battle Forge points. Or every day that you spend uh, 15, at least 15 minutes in a match, you get two free Battle Forge points every day. So we can come over here, and this thing will work. I think I just turned it off. Yeah, I just turned it off. All right. Now I do have to apologize. I do have a little bit of delay here. Um, I'm using internet by satellite, and uh, yeah, if you do use internet by satellite, I'm sorry. Uh, you have my sympathy because this sucks ass. I I hate this shit. It really sucks. All right. So, every day you can actually come back here and spend your two points for one randomly selected Battle Forge. It could be a common card, or if you're lucky, you'll get an uncommon card. And that card will be generated, you know, roughly from the, you know, from the other decks they have. You can see we got a couple decks there. Got three or four more down there. So, yeah, it's, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of decks. There's deck, there's deck. <laughs> everywhere, deck, deck. There's decks of cards everywhere. Alright, so you can do that. Um, another way you could save that two points, you know, say you don't want to spend any money on the game. Now, it will take you longer to get things um, if you don't spend money on the game. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to take you longer. But, this is a good thing you can do. If you decide to play the game, you get two points every day. And then you can watch your chat window down here. Sometimes you'll have people uh, come up and say, selling selling car selling decks selling cards uh two cards for one bfp point or cards one bfp point per card and then you you know right click on their name here and request deck and then it will show you the deck you can look at the cards and then you can whisper them you know by clicking the name whisper two and you know what do you want for this card what do you want for that card that's how one way you can start building up your deck a little bit and the reason why they're just selling those decks like that, those cards like that, is because if we go over here to, to the auction house, which is another place you buy cards. Alright, we'll go to item search. And I'll just type in, here's a card here, thugs. We'll just type, type in thugs. Okay? And then we will search for item. Do, 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 there we go. There are going to be, there's 25 auctions for thugs in this, in the auction house right now. And the cheapest is three Battle Forge points to buy that card. Tons of people have this card. There are tons more people, you know, of those people who have this card, there's a large number of them who don't use it. <clears throat> and it's just like, like me, you know, it's sitting here. I don't think I use thugs. 
but it's sitting here in my you know pile of cards and if I put it up on the auction house chances are it's not gonna sell because you know, the lowest buyout you could put in the auction house is three battle forge points so what people will do a lot of times is you know they have cards like the thugs and they'll put thugs and whatever else they have into a deck and then they'll advertise selling one BFP per card just to get rid of them it helps out new people it gets you know it gets this crap out of their inventory so they don't have to look at it anymore because they know they're not going to use it and it helps everybody out and they get a little bit of you know they get a little bit of points for it because you know most of those people we've just seen on the auction house are not going to sell that card it's going to come right back to their mailbox because there's so many of them out there and it's you can't undercut it because they're all listed at the lowest price yeah, so somebody's like me, I say, okay, I want a Thugs card, and I go to the auction house, there's 25 of them. 25 of them there, and you put a card, you put an auction of Thugs up, you have a 1 in 25 chance that I'm going to pick yours. So that's why people do that, and uh, it's really handy. Another thing you could do to uh, even get more Battle Forge points is, you know, uh, save up your 2 points a day, you know, for a couple, 2 or 3 weeks. You know, get you a few points, and then watch down here in the chat window. You'll see, uh, want to sell some cards. You know, say he say he said, I want to sell thugs. Okay, and, uh, say he said, uh, want to sell thugs, 10 BFP. Okay, so he wants to sell thugs for 10 Battle Forge points. You would go up to the auction house, you would look up thugs, and thugs might be selling. Now, of course, we've already determined it's not, but we're using this as an example. We've, you know, thugs might be selling for, you know, 25 BFP on the auction house. Well, he's just wanting some quick cash. He's wanting to get it sold and get it out of here. So you can buy his thugs for 10 and then throw it up on the auction house. And, you know, make 15 BFP profit. That's how a lot of people, I mean, you'll, you know, if you get in here and start networking, talking to people and stuff, you'll end up finding people who started with nothing, you know, and have, you know, a few million... BFP points because that's what they did. They you know started out small buying small shit and then worked their way up to where they were making you know 50, 75 BFP SL. You know the higher on the higher higher end cards. So that's just one way to do it. It's like playing the auction house in World of Warcraft, for instance. Yeah, you know, so that brings a whole another you know economy and kind of fun to the game because I know a lot of people play World of Warcraft anymore. Just log in, do the auction house, and log out. That's what I did probably in my last few months of playing World of Warcraft was just run the auction house and then log out. You know, like this guy here. Once you sell, trade, deck, promo, juggernaut for BFP plus cards or other promo. So we could look up juggernaut, see what it's selling for, and then, you know, whisper him, ask him what he wants, or, you know, throw him an offer on that card and then turn around if we buy it and then put it in the auction house for a profit. You know, like, for instance, that juggernaut, you put it in the auction house, you undercut everybody, it's going to sell. That's all there is to it. It's gonna sell. Alright, so we're going to jump into a game here. Just so we can kind of see how the game works a little bit. We're gonna run, jump into a, just a random uh, player versus environment PvE game. We're gonna set it just to one. Now this is just a regular, boring, old, random game. Um, if we look back... Uh, crap. If I can figure out what the hell I'm doing. This is the world map, and all these are PvE uh, campaign missions that you can play by yourself. You can play with one other person. You can play with up to four other people. And uh, it's all voiced over. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, the missions vary from different things you got to do. It's it's cool. Then you got your PvE over here, and then these are all your random just random B BS. So this is what we're gonna do now. So we're just going to do one. We're going to put on difficulty one here, and we're going to create a game. Just so we can kind of look at it. Um, there we go. Deck is locked, and we launched our, we're gonna, yeah, launch the game. <coughs> and we're kind of going to just kind of look at the game, see what a match kind of looks like, and really kind of see how the resource system works. Like I said, this is completely different from every other RTS game that's ever been made. Now this game does have kind of a low to a medium population. 
Um, there are always a lot of people on, though. I mean, you're never going to log in a game and there will only be like, you know, 20, 50 people on. There's always a lot of people on. There's always people to play with if that's what you want to do. Yeah, so that's really cool. But this game is not as popular as I think it should be. You know, this game has a lot, it's just a lot of fun, has a lot of potential, all kinds of things you could do with it. And uh, it's just not as popular as it could, as it could be or should be. Maybe that'll change. All right, so here we go. This is our starting area. Okay, so we're gonna start here. These are power wells. All right, power wells generate resource or energy. So you can see, you know, combined here, my resources, they uh, have 3,500 some change. And that's trickling into my pool, available pool at three points per second. This one here is called the void pool. Now that's where uh, when your units die, the energy you spent on them, 90% of the energy you spent goes into the void pool. And that slowly trickles into your available uh, pool there. And that's like getting gold or, you know, Warcraft or, you know, little crystal things in Starcraft. You know, that's what you use to buy your shit. Alright, next we have the, the monument. Okay, so the monument generates orbs of your different elements, depending on the element you're using. So we're using a nature deck, so we're going to be using nature. And your first one, your first orb automatically builds based on your first card you play. So we're going to put the archers down. And our orb showed, our uh, nature orb showed up. Alright, so we have 400 points, so we're just going to drop some more. Archers down here, <coughs> and this yeah you know, opening thing is kind of a classic start here. Now the these archers are included in one of your free decks that you get. Um, one of the best tier one units in the game, bar none. All right, and then I'm going to throw a shaman down. A shaman I had to buy in the auction house. They usually run about a hundred, hundred to one hundred fifty roughly BFP. Okay, so I have a couple shamans and some archers. So let's go find something to kill. You, you know, you just right click on the map to move somewhere to, uh, and also to attack things. Yeah, you know, there's no command, you know, for attack stop. I mean, there's these over right here. Attack, stop. Okay, but I've never used them before except the stop button. And then we're going to attack these guys down here. And we are going to conquer this new... We pretty much consider them bases in this game. You know, this new little base area here, so we can get another orb. Which will allow us to summon even more mon or higher level monsters. And more wells that will give us more resources. <coughs> and we're also going to hit this chest here, which will give us gold. And gold is used to upgrade your cards, which we will touch on in another video. Okay, we need another. So I just click on it and click my nature orb. Now that's going to build me another nature orb. So while I'm waiting on that, instead of just you know, sitting around here, because you notice on these particular maps, you have a time limit. Now this is only on the random matches that you usually get these time limits like this. Um, the only other time you, you know, like in the campaign maps, the only time you run into a time limit is if it's part of the story. Okay, we can see here we got some more small units down here. So I'm going to move forward a little bit and attack. Now we have two orbs. You can see two in the green over here while those guys are fighting. And these new cards opened up. You see how they have two circles? See like 190 in the upper right hand corner of that card. The orbs represent how many orbs. The 100 represents the amount of resources it takes to summon that. Like this one requires two nature orbs because they're both green. Alright, but we only have 200 so instead of summoning a new unit, we're going to build new resources. Because, or new wells because we want to generate resources as fast as possible. We don't have enough for a new orb yet, but that's all right. And another thing too is, you know, if regardless of what what you're playing, if you're playing fire, or, you know, shadow, ice, whatever, if you you know stand next to your wells or your orb, something like that, you will generate your 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 people will heal. Your units will heal that way. 
So, I mean, out in the field, they're not going to heal, but, you know, after a battle or something, you can always retreat back to a base and then heal up. Alright, so since we're waiting, let's bring in one of our bigger units. Let's bring in our Tier 2 Deep 1. A lot bigger unit. And we're going to go down here. Now, these are considered small units. He's gonna, he's a large unit. Or is he a medium? Yeah, he's a large unit. So watch what happens when he hits them. They just kind of scatter. Because he's, you know, he's like a huge monster compared to, you know, these little guys. When he hits them, they just all kind of get thrown all over the place, which is really cool. Uh, there are some cards, you know, whose abilities, you know, knock down those small ones like that. So you have a group of small archers. Say I have one of these small archers, and this guy over here has, you know, a unit that knocks things down. Well, my archers can't shoot back at him because they're constantly having to get up off the damn ground. Waiting. Yeah, so it's really cool. And then cards all have abilities, like this deep one, you know, has Tainted Coach, which uh, can let's see, activate to telepo teleport any uh, targeted hostile enemy, you know, to the caster, to himself. So, you know, like if there's a unit over here, I can use it and it'll just, you know, like a, a Scorpio or Scorpions, get over here with that huge cable in Mortal Kombat. So yeah, you know, they all have different spells. You know, a lot of them have spells, abilities. Alright, so here we have... These guys are going to... We're going to attack that. Now you'll notice these guys are going to hit my deep one. And he's going to get frozen. See? Because that's their ability. Whatever they hit kind of gets frozen or stuck. Plus they take some pretty good damage. And you see my shaman's trying to heal up. So he's frozen two of my archers. They killed my deep one. Oh. And always remember, you gotta build your orbs. You see, I'm running against time limit here and trying to do a video, so. Alright, and then I'm gonna pull my troops back. So I lost my melee. I almost lost a couple shamans. Okay, my orbs are down. Now I could push forward, or I could, you know, summon some more people. Um, now these here, these are what called neutral cards, uh, or hero cards. Now there's Rogue and Kale and Moon. It's like I put Moon down. She just requires any two orbs. Doesn't matter what orbs they are. And she has two abilities. Dark Art, which gathers up the corpses around her to heal her and everybody within that circle. And she has Necro Shade, which allows her to kind of teleport behind the enemy and stab them in the back. I said all of them have different, you know, different abilities, which is really cool. Which, you know, again, is where micromanagement, you know, can really come in, especially in the PvP aspect, which is something I've always sucked at. I've always been bad at micromanagement. But anyway, all right, so we're gonna come back up here. Away. We have seven minutes left to try to conquer this. This game also has a replay mode as well. I haven't played around with it yet, but I'm going to. Go ahead and summon Rogan Kale in here. It's another hero card. Now you notice he, he summoned in at half health. He also summoned in at ha uh, only able to do half power. Because I didn't summon him near one of my wells. I summoned him near my units. But in see if you see see his health that jumped back up there. Okay, so they're gonna knock out that tower, and then my shaman's gonna start healing. I have another healing character here, the time shifter. I'll bring him in to kind of help the shaman out with healing. Oh, didn't matter. We won. There you go. Yay, we won! So this game is pretty cool, and you know, you know, you kind of go through a path through the, you know, through the mat, through the levels and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, and it does, I mean, I know it kind of, you know, it can look kind of simple, but yeah, it, it brings in a whole new dynamic to the game, which really makes things interesting. You know, all the level, pretty much all the levels are like that, you know, with paths and stuff like that. Uh, now, like a lot of the PvE map, or PvP maps are all, uh, are all, ah, shit, they're all, like, open, a lot of them are. All right, and this here's where you would see the rewards um, if I'd really gotten any. I got two battle tokens and some, a little bit of gold, but I was only playing on level one, so you're not going to gain that much. All right, and we can see here, 
mail your daily reward. Let's read that. Yep, see I spent more than 15 minutes in that match. I guess that was my first match since the reset today and I get and I got two Battle Forge points were added to my account. So yeah, they do give you free currency, you know, and it does help. It does help, you know, over time. Especially if, you know, and especially when you get to a point like where you have at least one good solid deck that you really like and you play with that. Um you know, you may play with that to try to upgrade your cards. Your, you know, you can upgrade your cards. Your cards become more powerful with each level you upgrade them. So, you know, as you play with your cards that you currently have, you, know, you might get a deck that you really like. Say you want to get a nature deck. And, you know, you build your nature deck out. And you just want to play with your nature deck. Get it all built up. But while you're doing that, you're going to constantly be accumulating battle force points. So you're going to be able to use for more cards or an investment to get more points later. And this here's the forge, you know, where you can kind of look at your cards, you know, see what they look like. You can, you know, make them battle each other. And of course the Juggernaut's just going to own these two. Look at it, we got thrown it all the way across the ground, that's awesome. Look at him, BAM! See, that's just cool. But anyway, guys, so we're going to cut it here. Um, we will come back back with another episode on this game on upgrading cards and then we're going to actually look at we're going to cover cards in depth you know what are good cards what are bad cards um i might even make a new account just to kind of look at the starter decks and uh, maybe even get you know give the brand spank a new free to play people you know some advice on how to build some really good decks or use their cards uh so until next time guys remember comment rate and subscribe you know make sure you google iron uh iron make sure you google battle forge and you know Give this game a try. You know, you might just like it. This game is a lot of fun. Free to play. You never have to spend a dime on it. And uh, there is there is no prescription. Prescription. There is no subscription uh, option to this game. So this game is only funded by microtransactions. So, until next time, I will see you in game.